President Trump declaring war on the nation's opioid crisis today and offering a very personal story about his brother and his battle with addiction. But the president was careful with his words, calling it a, quote, public health emergency and why the words he chose could determine how much money the government will spend to fight this. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega tonight. With the stroke of a pen today, President Trump declared the opioid epidemic the worst drug crisis in American history. I am directing all executive agencies to use every appropriate emergency authority to fight the opioid crisis. The declaration means patients in rural areas can reach doctors and obtain prescriptions to treat addiction by phone or internet. Unemployed workers who lost their jobs because of addiction will receive job training and assistance, and it lifts bureaucratic red tape, allowing more funding for treatment centers in all 50 states. But the president stopped short of declaring a sweeping national emergency, something he has repeatedly promised. It's a national emergency. We're going to spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. Today, he said something slightly different calling it a public health emergency. That means his action does not include emergency federal money to address the crisis that kills nearly 100 people a day. For more than a year, ABC News followed families battling the effects of addiction. In New Hampshire, David sat down with Rory Smith, who found his son Aaron in their basement overdosed. He was gray. I yelled for the phone to call 911, and I proceeded to give him mouth to mouth he was not breathing, and I couldn't feel a heartbeat. Can you tell me what that's like? It's probably the worst thing I've ever had to do <clears throat> in my life. It was giving him mouth to mouth. I, I, I just, I said, is this how it's all going to end right here in my basement? That time they were able to revive Aaron, but after another overdose, he died. At his funeral, Carrie Norton, a nurse and advocate who tried to help Aaron, made this promise to his grieving father. I'm so sorry. I will fight for him, I promise you. Late today, Carrie told us the problem in New Hampshire has only gotten worse. People desperate for treatment, often having to wait weeks. Now, from President Trump, a familiar call to action targeting young people with a Just Say No style ad campaign. If we can teach young people and people generally not to start, it's really, really easy not to take them. The president said his own wake-up call came from his older brother, Fred. Great guy, best-looking guy, best personality, much better than mine. But he had a problem. He had a problem with alcohol. And he would tell me, don't drink. Don't drink. But he would say it over and over and over again. And to this day, I've never had a drink. And Cecilia Vega joining us from the White House. And Cecilia, it was deeply personal, the president's story. But the White House is still facing tough questions tonight about whether the president's action today is an adequate response for a crisis of this magnitude. Well, David, this comes at a time when the health secretary was fired over questions about his use of private jets. The nominee for drug czar withdrew his name from consideration. No replacement has been named. And you heard the Democrats. They are sounding the alarm about funding. Nancy Pelosi today said, show me the money. But the president, David, is calling this one a winnable war. And of course, you check back in with those families and will continue to do so on this opioid crisis. Cecilia, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.